Good day, YouTube. One MJ here, and welcome back. All right, Sunday afternoon here in Australia, and the markets have pulled back a little bit again. So Bitcoin just constantly getting rejected at around that kind of fifty thousand dollar mark at the moment. So we haven't really sort of seen that weekend pump. Again, we've been you know pumping through the weekends and kind of retracing through the weekdays over the last sort of few. Yeah, a couple of days, couple of weeks, or not couple of days, definitely sort of couple of weeks, and now we're not seeing that. It just seems we are kind of ranging, caught in a yeah a ranging pattern. But anyway, the market down a little bit, still above two trillion, which is really nice. Bitcoin dominance dropped just a little bit, but still in the forty three percent. Gas prices still fairly high, four dollars fifty five for a basic transaction. All right, as we can see, it's a bit of a mixed bag. Some things have done well, other things other things haven't. Right, what's done the best in the last 24 hours? What's the leader in the top 100, that is? Holy dooly. <laughs> Bitcoin Cash, 154% in the last 24 hours. That is quite a move. I mean, XE Cash, likewise, 122% in the last 24 hours. Bitcoin Gold's been on a rise. Near Protocol, Arweave, Ravain, Luna, Audius, still making some nice moves. Uh, I think this was a little bit higher and it had a retracement though. I think it was $3 something. So, yeah, doing all right. Look, it's a couple of amazing double-digit moves, a couple of really nice sort of double-digit moves, uh, and then, you know, some high single-digit moves as well. But the market is down. So what about losses though? Who hasn't performed that well? Right, Safe Moon. There we go. Drop back down to the three. Cello's down. Thorchain's down. Maddox down. Uh, Decred's down. Uh, XT Fin's down. So look, one fairly big uh, move down. Uh, one, yeah, again, not great. No one likes any kind of losses, but 10%'s not too bad, Cello. And then, you know, we're into the single digit losses and again a lot of these coins have already pumped over the last sort of few weeks so there's bound to be a retracement and as long as bitcoin can't sort of get above that fifty thousand, a lot of the altcoins are going to struggle a little bit if bitcoin just sort of ranges around fifty thousand, but doesn't constantly kind of get rejected the altcoins could go on a bit of a run but again, I think the market's going to be quite scared if Bitcoin can't break that 50,000. I think Bitcoin needs to slowly be ticking upwards a little bit, not too much. It can, you know, jump above 50, drop just down below, jump up to 52,000, drop down to 50,000, jump up to 53,000, drop down to 51,000, something like that. And then the altcoins are going to start to do much better. But as long as Bitcoin keeps getting rejected at the $50,000 mark, I think you're going to be hard up to find too much more profits from the altcoins could be completely wrong though it's not my uh it's just my personal opinion it's never financial advice but i think that will have the market a little bit spooked because a lot of people are still scared that this is a dead cat bounce and so far it hasn't proven uh that theory wrong uh it hasn't proven it right either all right let's go over to the bitcoin chart and here we can see and it is almost playing it out perfectly. Like I said, we just keep bouncing on this bottom line here at the moment. And we have now been ranging sideways for, whew, there we go, a little bit over a week. And I mean, you could sort of almost say from around about sort of back here, really. So what's that? The 9th of August. So that is basically three weeks. Bitcoin's been kind of ranging. We finally got back up in this channel. And now we just keep jumping up and down, up and down, up and down. Altcoins can do all right, but again, I think the market is going to be a little bit concerned about us not being able to break that $50,000 mark. And this is starting to look a lot more like this. We come up, we drop down. We come up, we drop down. We come up, set a high, drop down. Come up, set another higher high. Drop down, come up, set another higher high drop down and now maybe we are starting to do this again so this definitely could be in a much smaller time frame and i'm not saying it is i'm just saying what it looks like is this could be a uh, distribution phase again on a much smaller time frame and you know maybe the cycles have really changed now that the big players are here maybe we will never see you know the four-year cycle is it dead i mean that is the question it's not that we won't have the halvings every four years anymore but these massive you know 
uh, fluctuations up and then massive fluctuations down. Are they now dead because the institutions are here? Like if institutions bought in at sort of, you know, 30,000, even 40,000, they're not going to want to let Bitcoin ever go below that really. I'm not saying they wouldn't let it go a little bit below it. And sometimes there may be things happening in the world that completely force their hand. But why would you want to buy something at, you know, 40,000 and then let it dip below that uh, for any prolonged period other than you've got a whole lot of money ready to go to buy even more again to lower your uh, initial sort of buy-in price. But that's sort of something I'm looking at at the moment. And again, trying to make decisions on, you know, is this four-year cycle... Uh, theory now dead and dusted the big money's here because it was easy to play out like that before but can it still do that now or is bitcoin now going to play out like you know our regular kind of markets and just slowly creep up don't get me wrong still have corrections here and there but you know whether we're going to see the you know 30 40 x uh you know moves to the upside uh followed by you know 70 to 90 percent moves to the downside yeah, I guess time's going to tell. We'll have to wait and see. But what's interesting is this 100, sorry, 50-day moving average is slowly starting to creep up towards this 200-day moving average. And if the 50-day moving average breaks the 200-day moving average, people tend to call that a golden cross and mean that it's super bullish. It's not always. Uh, and again, these are indicators that we used to be able to use. I think a lot of the indicators that we used to be able to use won't be as accurate now because there's big money here and they look at you know millions of different uh indicators they don't just use a couple of simple ones that we're all sort of used to so hence why we need to use on-chain analytics a lot more and even then you know you hear stories about you know there's not as many big wallets anymore because what they're trying to do to skew the analytics is rather than having one wallet with, you know, let's say a thousand Bitcoin in it, they might have five or ten different wallets with a whole lot less in it to try and skew the analytics. So these are the things that we need to keep in mind. I don't know if this stuff is absolutely happening, but it is just something I'm at least conscious of and it is making me reevaluate, you know, whether I'll sell any Bitcoin ever again. And I might just hold it because I got it, you know, at such a good price compared to where it is now. It'd really take a miracle for it to ever go back down there. So really, I may as well just hold it. And then whether we're going to see those kind of altcoin crashes of, you know, 99% again. Because if we don't see another bear market like that, then we're not going to. We definitely did see altcoins crash almost 90% in this though. We did see some crash like that. Others, not so much. So that's what I'm just waiting to see. You know, is the four-year cycle dead? Uh, the bear market's going to be this. Is this now the bear market? And that's it. And then you just recover. Because again, this is Bitcoin at the moment and it's become institutionalized. Maybe those kind of, again, big massive drops like that are just simply done. And we may never see them again outside of, again, some kind of black swan event. So something to consider. But Bitcoin... Still traveling up, upwards at the moment. It is just staying right along the bottom of this channel. And again, it has been in this channel for quite some time. So hopefully this will load a little bit faster. But there you go. That was the big crash back in March of 2020. And then look what it did since then. Traveled up, traveled down. Traveled up. Stayed up for quite some time. Traveled down and broke out to the low side. But now it seems to be tracking just nicely. And again, this is on the bottom level. So for th this says to me, at the moment, Bitcoin feels like it's a good buy based on this price history. Now, this isn't going to be the price history for the rest of its life. It's likely going to have other corrections. As you can see, this didn't play out for this part, didn't play out for that part, but it's had a lot of different kind of moves. And is this just maybe this or this? Or this and we still have all of this to go to then be followed by unfortunately a brutal correction again same thing as this a lot of people think this is the 2013 so we've had the big pump it's gonna fall off and then you know maybe we're doing this right now before it then has that last final leg up very hard to know you know anyone who says they absolutely do know what's gonna happen oh, I'd be careful <laughs> you know taking too much advice from that person because no one truly knows what's going to happen. We're all just taking, you know, a bit of an educated guess. But at the moment, as long as it keeps, 
you know, ticking up along the bottom of this line, I am still very bullish on it. All right, this isn't an actual story, but this is just going to show how crazy things are in NFTs at the moment. This is on Decrypt, and I like Decrypt. They're a pretty good uh, place to go and get some crypto news. Ether Rock NFT's original code has bug that lets anyone mint more for free. That's one story. Ethereum NFT CryptoPunk hits 1 billion in total sales. That's two NFT stories. OpenSea's weekly sales surpass 1 billion for the first time. That's three NFTs. If you don't kill, uh, sorry, if you don't buy this NFT, we kill the dog. <laughs> oh, good Lord. Uh, that's four NFTs. NBA star Stephen Curry buys uh, Ethereum Board 8 Yacht Club NFT for 180000 I think that's five or six. Was it one, two, three, four, five? That is five NFT stories all on the front page of just one, you know, crypto uh, sort of specific website. <sighs> I do like NFTs, uh, and I wish that I had have bought some. But again, I just, I've said this before, I just don't know enough about it. Outside of buying something that's, you know, fairly cheap, only costs a few dollars, simply because I like the look of it and for sentimental value, I'm just, I'm too scared. Number one, I don't have anywhere near enough crypto to come and buy some of these, you know, things that are worth hundreds of thousands of dollars or millions of dollars i just yeah i straight up don't have enough but number two even if i did uh, i'd be worried that i'd just be buying the wrong thing and it'd sort of go to zero hence why for a lot of these nfts uh i'm not sure about the bored apes you know maybe they'll be good crypto punks this is something that i wish i had have been able to you know sort of force the and bought some of i'd love to have some of them i think they really will hold their value but yeah i just haven't jumped in i haven't bought a single nft yet uh, I'll probably wait and see if there is another bear market in the future. I may well look to sort of buy, uh, you know, maybe I could get a crypto punk at some price that's just not completely and utterly ridiculous. Well, not so much ridiculous, but just completely out of uh, my league. Although I don't, I'm not holding my uh, breath for that because I don't know. But again, NFTs, they just feel very hyped at the moment. And I think there is uh, definitely going to be a slow down at some stage look whether we're at that peak stage yet i don't know but it is scary you know that these things you know a year ago you could buy them for a couple of hundred dollars and now they are worth hundreds of thousands of dollars i mean we don't even have cryptos uh that have done that but nfts have done that so something to think about all right Australians reported losses of $25 million from crypto scams in the first half, half of 2021. This is kind of the problem with the space at the moment, and this is all where a lot of the FUD will come from, is, you know, there's so many scams and people not paying their taxes and doing this and doing that and blah, blah, blah. Uh, and this is unfortunate. And, you know, being Australian, I don't want to see any Australians scammed. Uh, you really need to understand this space uh, before you, you know, dive into the space, do a little bit of research, you know, like take a week, uh, get onto YouTube and, you know, be careful on YouTube as well. But there's lots of good information out there. You've just got to know how to find it, uh, where to go. And again, I'm not recommending anything in particular, but, you know, there's definitely some good crypto channels out there. Find ones that have lots of viewers, not ones that have not a lot of viewers. I'm not saying don't watch any crypto channels that don't have a lot of viewers, but when they're actually giving you advice on how to use platforms and how to buy it and things like that, yeah, try and stick with some of the more reputable ones because they've been around. The chance of them being a scammer is less. Not impossible. Unfortunately, there is uh, some quite popular YouTubers who've been caught out scamming uh, people before. So it's not like, you know, just trust the popular ones. But yeah, this is disappointing. $25 million is a lot of money. And I would say that the people that lost the money, this is not from one person, but they probably really needed that money. And they were trying to change their future. And unfortunately, someone's come in and uh, changed it uh, in a negative fashion. And, you know, we might lose people to crypto for a number of years because of things like this. And that's sad because it is a place that can really transform your life, uh, provided yeah, you don't get scammed. So very disappointing. Right, Cardano's 
They have partnered with the EBU to make education for Africa more accessible. There's been lots of news about this and even more is coming out. So it says here, Cardano has joined forces with the European Business University of Luxembourg and their goal is to make education in developing African countries more accessible, affordable and equitable. I love this. I'm, I am... You know, I was somewhat skeptical about how Cardano was going to do. They've been out for a long time, and other than they just had a coin, it didn't really seem like sort of much was happening. You know, they are oh so close to having smart contracts rolled out, and again, that's all it is at the moment, though, unfortunately. It's oh so close. We still haven't seen it. But hopefully that all happens soon, and, you know, they're partnering with, uh, you know, universities, to try and make things uh, better in developing nations and things like that. I love it. I love what they're about. I am very bullish on Cardano long term, provided they can roll out these smart contracts. We're still yet to see it. As I've said before on my channel a number of times, investing in cryptos is like being a venture capitalist. You're investing in things before they're actually legit. You're getting in super early, hoping that they're going to do well because yeah again other than bitcoin that's the only finished product that i know of as far as i know all the rest of them are still sort of in development trying to build their ecosystems and do this and do that and you know get smart contracts going bitcoin is the only kind of finished product still needs to upgrade really through scaling but outside of that bitcoin is a finished product all the rest of them they still aren't really finished products i mean you know some people might say dogecoin is a finished product and you know fair enough maybe it is but a lot of these kind of smart contract platforms and that, yeah, as far as I know, they're still in that building phase. They don't have a true finished product like Ethereum, not a true finished product. Not sure about Solana. I've heard good things about Solana. Uh, but again, I'm not sure if that's a finished product. I don't know how many you know, apps are being built on it and it's actually being used. I know a lot of people are buying it at the moment and that's great. But whether it has any real use cases outside of that at the moment, not so sure. Uh, a lot like Polkadot, you know, they're still getting their parachain sorted out on Kasama before they can then get sorted out on the Polkadot main chain. And yeah, <sighs> just remember that. Great place to make money at times, but also a great place to lose money if they can't live up to what they said they're going to. And then again, we simply go back to here. You know, there's a lot of scams going out there. So please just be careful. All right, SEC partners with blockchain analytics firm to monitor the DeFi space. So there's been talk that they're going to come after DeFi in particular, you know, things that are securities and commodities and this and that and the derivatives market and, you know, seems like they are. For me, I don't mind if they come and monitor it. And, you know, again, we do need some regulation. There's people who are very, very anti-regulation. And I would say that's fine because they're probably a little bit smarter and know a little bit more. But everyone's anti-regulation until you lose a whole lot of money and then all of a sudden you want something done about it. You know, we need to get the police to go after them. And it's like, well, we needed some regulation. If there was no regulation, then there's no reason that the police can go after anyone and things like that. So happy for them to come, monitor it, take action when needed. But again, my thing is I don't mind regulation. I don't like over-regulation. When all of a sudden the old system think that they can bring their old rules to the new system uh, and then all they do is basically kill it and turn the new system into the old system. The old system doesn't work. We need new rules, new laws, new regulations for this new system to allow it to grow. Again, weed out the bad players, go after the bad players and things like that. But let the people who are doing the right thing foster and innovate things. Some mistakes are going to be made. That's always how it's going to be. Again, we do need to monitor it, make sure that, you know, if it's a genuine mistake, then it is what it is. It's a genuine mistake. But, you know, any kind of dodgy stuff, absolutely, we need people to go in. Uh, and again, weed out all the bad players, you know, prosecute them, do everything that they need to. But please, let's not kill this space. And, e you know, as bad, because killing it is obviously really bad, but as bad is don't regulate it so hard to try and make it like the old system. The old system's done. It is a fact of life that what is uh, old, or sorry, what's new, one day becomes old. Simple as that. It's no good anymore. We need to move on to the next thing. We need to continue to evolve, foster innovation and things like that. 
and that's what the crypto space is and particularly DeFi. it is opening up a whole new system that is a lot fairer for you know people in general than yeah the old system that we have that we know just benefits the rich and keeps the poor and middle class working and poor and middle class last but not least more news with the sec so the sec wins judgment against actor steven seagal after he ignores court order to settle crypto fraud case so there are a number of people that got caught out back in 2017 and uh, old steven seagal was one of them i mean he's just getting it from all angles he's his movie career is basically done and dusted he's been sort of ousted as a a sexual sort of tyrant towards women and all sorts of stuff going on and now he's got this so the famous actor had agreed to pay disord oh god am i gonna say this right disgorgement of more than three hundred thirty thousand dollars to settle the crypto fraud case he was involved in the sec alleged that seagal failed to disclose that he was promised two hundred fifty thousand in cash seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars in tokens for promoting an initial coin offering ico for bitcoin to gen oh god that just sounds so horrible straight away the movie star has made just one seventy five thousand dollar payment and is delinquent on the remainder so the sec are coming after him he's currently in russia though so maybe he's gonna uh sort of seek asylum he's a citizen there whether you know they'll be after to go after him in russia to get the money considering uh, the president over there, uh, God, what's his name, Vladimir Putin, that it issued a presidential decree in 2016 granting uh, him Russian citizenship. So, yeah, can the SEC actually get him? That is the question. All right, look, that's it from me. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Hopefully you're on that gain train. Some people might be a little bit on the uh, downside, but that's the way of the markets. They're going to fluctuate. Till next time, I'm out.